Hello, welcome back. Before we continue, please pause the video and download the template that is associated with the VF Corporation. So uh, this is from your course website uh, so that you can follow along. Um, in the VFW Corporation, we were given um, three years worth of income statement item and also two years worth of balance sheet items. So go ahead and download the template and then open it up in Excel and we will continue there. Okay, everyone ready? So we ha uh, before we get started, I just want to point out a couple items in the balance sheet um, that has to do with the equity. Uh, notice that the company has um, authorized 25 million shares of preferred stock, but none of it is outstanding. So that means it has not issued any. Um, it has 300 million shares of common stock, um, and these are the corresponding shares outstanding. Okay, so our first step is to reformulate um, various items. I suggest that you have the um, lecture slide for that particular, those three pages printed out or have your textbook open um, so that you can follow along. If you don't have more than one monitor, this can get a little bit challenging. Um, however, um, it is... Um, so if you don't have multiple monitors, then I suggest that you print out those few pages from the um, lecture slides so it's easier for you to follow along. So remember for operating asset, we're going to start with uh, some of the um, current asset items. So instead of um, copying the the, uh, or, or typing out the description, you can actually reference them using a formula in Excel. So to start any formula in Excel, start with the equal sign. We can scroll up. Uh, we know that we're going to start with cash. And we can copy down and say, see which one we will include. So the next one is accounts receivable. We know we'll include that. Inventory, we'll include that. Deferred income tax, we'll include that, and other current assets. So we know we'll include all of those. And then, um, so just to double check, so that pick up all our current assets. The next thing we need is property time, uh, property plan and equipment. Um, as well as intangible asset, goodwill, and other assets. So basically, we're going to um, include all the asset items. So let's do equal again. So we're going to go pick up property plan and equipment. And we can copy down and see if it works. That is intangible asset and goodwill. And then finally, other assets. So these are all the operating assets. Now, the beauty of using the equal sign is that once you have identified the correct row number, you don't have to memorize it. I just can just, um, I can use shift control down arrow. So there's some Excel trick that I'm gonna introduce as well. And then copy. And if you hold down the um, shift key, you can use the right arrow key to highlight two columns at the same time. And then press enter. And you, you, you want to double check, but you are picking up all the correct corresponding um, values from the template. So we can format this to two decimal places or zero. Um, actually, I'm going to put it as zero decimal places because these are very large numbers. So now we have identified all the operating assets. Um, next, we're going to subtract from it um, operating liabilities. So let's take a look at what operating liability we have. Remember that operating liability is mostly from the current um, liabilities side. So we have current liability. Uh, Short-term borrowing, we do not include that. That is part of... Um, financing. Uh, current portion of long-term debt, we also do not include that in operating because that's also part of financing. So we only have accounts payable, accrued liability, and other liabilities. So we just have three items. So accounts payable, 
accrue liability and I have to use the equal sign again to find um, other liability. Here we go. So those are the liability. Once again, once I have identified the correct row, I can just copy this over. And that gives us um, our operating liability. And we can then compute our net operating assets. So that's equal to all the operating assets. So I'm going to add up those. So the sum of all the operating assets minus all the operating liabilities. So minus the sum of the operating liability. Okay. So that will give me net operating asset. And I want to format this all with zero decimal places. And you can also include a line here. So that's how we compute net operating assets. It is a good idea to save your work often. So um, you don't want to lose any of your work as you um, go through it. So we, now we finished part of it. We want to keep continuously sa saving your work. Um, now that we're done with operating asset, we're going to uh, end operating liabilities. We're going to move on to uh, financing obligations. So again, we're going to use our equal sign to pick up our financing obligations. We have short-term borrowing and current portion of long-term debt. So we have two of those. And we also have um, long-term debt. So we have three of those. In addition to that, we also need to pick up any non-controlling interest. So we have non-controlling interest here. So those are all the financing obligations. And again, to emphasize the reason for that, we don't have preferred stock is because we don't have any outstanding. If there were preferred stock, we'll include that in our financing obligation as well. So now we have our financing obligation. Uh, check your spelling <laughs> as you go. Um, we have a net financing obligation, um, which in our case, we don't have any financing assets. So our net financing obligation is just the sum of all our financing obligations. Lastly, we're going to uh, bring in common stock. Um, common stock is um, there's really no adjustment we need to do to that. So we have common equity. Um, so we can add up all the account for common equity. We don't have any adjustments. So for common equity, just to make sure that we don't include preferred stock, it include par value, additional paying capital, accumulated other comprehensive income, as well as accumulated retained earnings. So all of this will be part of equity. So now we have both net operating asset, net financing obligation, and also common equity. Um, we can add up both of those to make sure that they balance. So if we take our net financing obligation plus common equity, you should get net operating assets. So this is our reformulated um, balance sheet items. So go. OK, next we're going to take a look at the income statement. Now we call that for income statement items, we are very mindful that we need to compute after-tax um, 
items. So in order to do that, the first thing we're going to do is actually going to compute the effective tax rates for each year. So to compute the effective tax rate, we're going to take income tax divided by income before tax. So again, we can um, start the formula with an equal sign. So let's just do it one more time, equal. And then we scroll up to income tax and divide that by income before tax. So I can change the number of decimal places for this. I typically use four decimal places. So those are effective tax rate for year one and year two. Since most of our analysis is focused on year two, I'll just do the income statement um, for year two. So we can actually use the same strategy that we have done for um, uh, the other financial statements. So we start with uh, sales. So we have revenue and cost. So we start with um, the operating item. So we want to compute operating profit. So we have net sales and royal in royalty income, both our revenue. And then cost, we have cost of goods sold and also marketing, administrative, and general expenses. So these are our operating items. Okay, so our operating income or operating profit, you'll notice is quite similar. And just to highlight the um, difference, I'm going to use the term profit. So we will add up our revenue and subtract our cost. So we have operating profit. The next item is a little bit tricky, and, um, and we need to do some detective work to determine um, what we should do. So we have interest income. So should we include that as operating or not? So the way that we determine that is to look at whether or not we have financing assets. So remember, uh, the, we need to match the flow to um, whether or not we have financing um, assets and financing obligations. We do not have any financing assets. So what that means is the interest income we see here, which is a relatively small amount, is, tip, is probably associated with um, our operating assets. So we probably still earn interest on some of our investments or cash in equivalent. Um, we don't have any financing assets. Because of that, we're going to put income, interest income as part of our operating cash flow. So um, I want to emphasize that that is an, from non-financing asset. If we have financing asset, we'll put it in a separate category. So we have to include our income of 33.53. And then we also have other income or expenses. So this is on a net basis. And we have 46,860. So these are all part of um, our on operating profits. So this is our adjusted income before taxes. So that's our operating profit plus interest income and other income. So here are our um, adjusted income. And we have to then determine how much income tax is, is associated with the adjusted income. So we're going to use the effective tax rate that we have computed. So what that means is we will multiply the adjusted income before tax by the tax rate.
The difference between the two will give us a net operating profit after tax. So this is no pad. So now we can format this so that it's easier to see. All right. So this is our goal is to compute net operating profit after tax. Next, we're going to compute financing expenses. So first we have interest expense. And notice that instead of showing it as a negative number, we're going to show interest expense as a positive number. So uh, that has to do, to do with when we rearrange the items, we want to make sure that uh, we are subtracting expenses. So instead of showing it as negative, we're going to show that as positive. So interest expense is 93,605. So to show a negative number as a positive number, I put a negative sign in front of it. And then we need to convert this into an after tax amount. So we'll multiply by one minus the effective tax rate. So just to be really clear on what we're doing, I'm going to put that out. So this is going to one minus the effective tax rate, which we computed earlier. And then our net interest expense after tax is equal to our interest expense times 1 minus the effective tax rate. So our after tax interest expense is 71,503. And we also have net income and losses attributed to non-controlling interest. So let's pick that up. Again, these are non-controlling interests, therefore it is not part of um, operate, uh, operating. But we're going to, once again, um, reverse the two. So instead of income showing up as a negative number and expense showing up as a positive number, we're going to actually reverse the two. We're going to have income showing up, uh, showing up as a positive number and losses showing up as a negative number. So we have to, once again, put a negative sign in front of it. So that's our net income. Um, so we actually generate the income. Um, from our non-controlling interest. Uh, so our combining all of this, our net financing expense after tax is the sum of these two. Okay. Then we can compute our net income available to common stockholders. So the income to common equity is no pet, net operating profit after tax minus, so that's why those are sort of as negative as positive. So we are mi subtracting our financing expenses. So that is our net income to common shareholders. Now, of course, if you check this against your original income statement, you should get exactly the same amount. And the reason is because all we are doing is just rearranging. We are not changing the number, but we're rearranging them so that they're in a format that is more usable for us. Uh, now that we have computed um, both the income statement or rearranged both the income statement and the balance sheet, we are ready to do some of the uh, ratio calculations. But remember that when we compute the ratios, we need to use the average value for um, balance sheet items. So we have year one and year two, so we can compute the average quite easily. Again, remember this is the intermediate step that we did in the in the prior exercises. I'm not going to do any rounding, so I'm just going to change the number of decimal places. And so we can once we compute, the, we create one. We can copy it down. Um, we can double check to make sure that um, 
what we have is correct, so our operating asset. So this is our average operating asset, and we can do the same. So again, copy the formula down for uh, financing obligation as well as uh, common equity. So we have we we have our average number for every single um, item that we will be using. So now we are ready to continue with um, compu computing the ratios. Um, so remember, the first one we want to look at is operating ROA. Operating ROA is defined as NOPAT, net operating profit after tax, divided by average net operating asset. So our net operating uh, operating ROI is 17.01%. Remember, we can decompose this into um, is separating uh, components. We can compute operating profit margin and also um, operating asset turnover. So operating profit margin is equal to no pad divided by sales. So we have to add up this two. And then operating asset turnover is sales. So again, is the sum of net sales and royalty income divided by average operating asset. So here you can see that they have a profit margin of 10.64% and it's a turnover rate of 1.5986. So is a, and we can double check to see if the two do, when we multiply these two, do we get back net operate, uh, operating ROA? And of course it should. So here's our check. Next, we can take, we're gonna take a look at ROE. Next, let's take a look at ROE. ROE is defined as net income to common equity divided by average common equity. Now we can um, decompose this into its traditional three components. Um, the first will be um, ROE profit margin. And again, the important thing here to remember is when we compute ROE profit margin, we're going to use net income to common equity. So we take net income to common equity divided by revenue. So we need this sum of these two. And then we um, will need the operating asset turnover. which is actually computed the same way. Um, we need sum of sales divided by average operating assets. So not surprisingly, operating asset turnover is the same for ROA as for ROE. And then finally, we have equity multiplier. Um, and just a reminder, this is the operating equity multiplier, which means that we use the operating assets. So it is equal to average operating asset divided by average common equity. Similar to ROA, we can also check to see if um, we did this correctly. So we'll take um, ROE profit margin times operating asset turnover times operating equity multiplier. And not surprisingly, we get back the same ROE because we really didn't, uh, we are just rearranging things differently. We are not doing a different calculation. Now in this chapter, we also learn a different way to um, rearrange um, ROA, uh, ROE. 
So, another way to decompose or rearrange it is to take um, operating ROA plus um, the debt to equity ratio. And then also compute our uh, net borrowing rate. So once again, make sure that you have the formulas handy so you don't have to memorize all of it. Um, and we can compute the spread as well. So operating our way, we already computed that. That is 17.01%. Debt to equity ratio, so we're going to take um, our net financing obligation divided by common equity. Once again, I'm using all average numbers. So what that means is um, our debt for every dollar that we have in equity, we borrow 41 cents. Our net borrowing rate is equal to our after-tax net interest expense. So this is net financing expense after tax divided by our net financing obligations. So here we see that our net borrowing rate based on our current expenses is 3.62%, which is quite a bit lower than operating our A. So we have a positive spread. So the spread is just the difference between operating our ROA and net borrowing rate. And we know that if we have a positive spread, using leverage is going to increase our ROE. So remember, ROE is equal to operating ROA plus debt to equity ratio times the spread. And not surprising, that also check. So that's just another way for us to look at um, ROE you can look at it as a rearrangement or a decomposition. So here it shows the direct impact of leverage. Without leverage, our operating ROA is 17.01%. With leverage, because we have a positive spread and we use leverage, our ROE is higher at 22.5%. 22, 22 we will end the example here. Uh, in the next video, we're going to continue discussing um, different way to measure different types of risk. See you soon.